Dear students, now we are going to discuss the analysis of series series feedback amplifier in detail. In series series feedback topology, the first term represents the way of mixing the feedback signal with the input signal. Series mixing represents the voltage feedback signal connected in series with the input voltage signal. So here input signal and feedback signal both are voltage signal. Okay. The second term represents the way of sampling the output signal. Here series type is used. So series sampling means current sampling method. Then the output is a current signal. In this configuration, the output current is fed back in series with the input circuit. Hence, it is known as current series feedback amplifier. So, the output is a current. The feedback signal is connected in series with the input circuit. So, in the series series feedback method, the input as well as the feedback both are voltage. Okay. So here output is a series type that means current sampling, output signal is a current signal. This is the diagram of this series series feedback amplifier. The input is a voltage signal so we can use voltage source. The feedback signal is a voltage signal. The voltage feedback is connected in series with this input signal. Okay, then the amplifier with your gain A is equal to Output by input. Output is nothing but the current. Input is the voltage for this amplifier. Next we are going to use current sampling method. It can be done by using series sampling. Okay. Next the feedback network with a gain beta is equal to output by input. Output test VF. Input test IO. Here the input is voltage. Output is current. That is the output current is directly proportional to input voltage. Here the proportionality constant is nothing but Gm. So that is equal to IO by Vi. The ratio of current to voltage is called as transfer conductance. Hence this configuration is also known as transconductance amplifier. So you have to remember this. Series series feedback amplifier is also known as transconductance amplifier. For this transconductance amplifier, the input impedance should be high and output impedance should also be high. Okay. Next, we are going to analyze the gain of series series feedback amplifier. Gain of amplifier without feedback is given as A that is nothing but Gm. Do you all understand? Gm means transfer conductance or transconductance that is nothing but the gain of that amplifier. That is equal to output current by input voltage. Do you all understand this? From this we can get that output current IO is equal to Gm into Vi. Then the feedback factor beta is equal to Vf by IO. From this we can get Vf is equal to beta into IO. Okay. Next we are going to get the value of this input voltage of the amplifier. So for that we can consider this diagram. From this, we can get the value of this Vi. Vi is the actual input voltage to this amplifier. That can be obtained by subtracting this feedback voltage from this source voltage. Since we are using negative feedback, we are going to subtract this Vf from this source voltage. So, Vi is equal to Vs minus Vf. Then we can replace this Vf with the value beta IO. Okay. Then this IO can be replaced with the value Gm into Vi as we have already discussed. Okay. So IO can be replaced with the value Gm Vi. Next we are going to move this Vi term to this side. Then this term becomes plus. Okay. From this we can get the value of Vs that is equal to Vi plus beta Gm Vi. Then we can take Vi as a common term. Vs is equal to Vi into 1 plus Gm beta. From this we can get the value of the gain of the feedback amplifier. This is the general form. We are going to obtain this value by substituting this Vs term in this formula. So here the gain with feedback is equal to IO by Vs. Vs is nothing but Vi into 1 plus Gm beta. 
I O is equal to G M into V I. Then this V I V I cancel. Then we can get the gain of the feedback amplifier A F is equal to G M by one plus G M beta. This can also be written as A by one plus A beta. So G M is nothing but the gain of that transconductance amplifier. Do you all understand this? From this. We come to know that the gain of the amplifier is decreased by the factor one plus G M beta to increase the stability of the feedback amplifier. Next, we are going to analyze the input impedance and output impedance of this series series feedback amplifier. For that, we can understand the concept of small signal equivalent circuit. So, this is the small signal equivalent circuit of series series feedback amplifier. Here the input is a voltage signal. Feedback is also a voltage signal. So we can connect that feedback voltage signal in series with this input signal. So mixing can be done in series connection. Do you all understand this? And the amplifier can be replaced with the equivalent circuit which consists of the input resistance and the transconductance multiplied with this input voltage to produce the output current. Here the output is a current signal, so we can use Norton circuit. That is the current signal in parallel with the output resistance. Okay, here output is a current signal, so we can use Norton circuit. Then the load resistance across that we can get the output voltage. Do you all understand this concept? Okay. So next we are going to find out the input impedance of this series series feedback amplifier. For that we can consider the input equivalent circuit. So here the input impedance without feedback R i is equal to V i by I i. If we are going to include this feedback signal, then the input impedance with feedback R i f is equal to V s by I i. Do you all understand? So here the input voltage is V s and the current is I i. That means the input voltage is V s and then the input current is I i. Next we are going to apply K V l to this input circuit to get the value of this V s. So here we are going to apply K V l. So voltage rises V s. There are two voltage drops. One is across this R i. Another one is feedback signal. That is plus to minus. So here voltage rise is equal to sum of voltage drops. V s is equal to I i into R i that is the drop across this resistance and then V f. We can get the value as V s is equal to I i R i plus V f. We can replace this V f with the value beta into I o. Then this I o can be replaced with the value G m V i. Okay. This V i can be written as according to Ohm's law I into R. Do you all understand? So then we can take this I i R i as a common term from this one. We can get I i R i into 1 plus beta G m that is equal to V s. So what is R i f? V s by I i. Then we can move this I i to this side. We can get the input impedance with feedback. Then V s by I i is equal to R i into 1 plus G m beta. This is nothing but input impedance with feedback. That is equal to R i into 1 plus G m beta. R i is the input impedance without feedback. Thus the input impedance of the amplifier is increased by the factor 1 plus G m beta using series series feedback. Okay. So the next one is output impedance. For finding out the output impedance we have to make two assumptions here. One is to disconnect the load resistance, the next one is source signal is equal to zero. Okay, so for that we can consider that output equivalent circuit. Here we have to disconnect the load resistance. Then we have to find out the actual output impedance of this amplifier ROF. Then we can include this RL which is parallel to this ROF to get ROF dash. Do you all understand this one? Okay. So next we are going to find out the output impedance ROF which is nothing but VO by IO. As we are going to 
looking into this output impedance from this direction we can take the feedback current signal io here we can apply kcl to this output node this is the output node at this point we can calculate that current signal okay the kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of incoming currents is equal to sum of outgoing currents so we can write io is equal to vo by io that is the current through this resistance plus gm vi do you all understand this so here we can take that output current is equal to what gm vi plus vo by ro do you all understand at this point we can apply kcl so in io is equal to vo by ro plus gm vi so as we know that the source voltage is equal to zero here then the input voltage vi is equal to minus vf we can replace this vi as minus vf then we can get vo by ro minus gm vf vf can be replaced with the value beta io okay then we can move this io term to other side to make it as a common one then this term becomes plus here vo by ro is equal to io plus gm beta io then take this io as a common term here okay then we can move this io to this left hand side ro to this right hand side then we can get vo by io is equal to ro into 1 plus gm beta this is nothing but rof correct thus the output impedance is increased by the factor 1 plus gm beta so next we are going to obtain the output impedance with rl that is represented as rof dash that is equal to rof in parallel with rl here we can use parallel formula rof multiplied with rl by rof plus rl then we can substitute the value of this rof in this formula rof can be replaced with ro into 1 plus gm beta into rl divided by ro into 1 plus gm beta plus rl then we can write the numerator as ro rl into 1 plus gm beta in the denominator ro is multiplied with this one as well as with this value so ro plus rl plus ro gm beta so next step we are going to divide the numerator and denominator by the value ro plus rl then this term becomes numerator becomes ro rl by ro plus rl into 1 plus gm beta divided by this ro plus rl together divided by this value as 1 plus ro gm by ro plus rl into beta this can be written as rof dash is equal to ro dash into 1 plus gm beta divided by 1 plus beta g capital m where this ro dash is nothing but the parallel combination of ro and rl and gm is equal to ro gm by ro plus rl this is nothing but gain of the amplifier with rl resistance this is the gain of the amplifier without rl resistance okay